For the first time in history, a man with two leg amputations that uses running specific prostheses has qualified for and participated in the Olympics. Some people believe that Oscar Pistorius, the South African sprinter, absolutely epitomizes the Olympic spirits and belongs there. Others believe that he has an unfair advantage because of his prostheses and doesn't belong in the Olympics. I was part of the research team that enabled Oscar Pistorius to be in the Olympics. Thank you. So Oscar was 11 months old when both of his legs were amputated below the knee. He was born without fibulas, and fibulas are the bones on the lower leg on the outside. They're essential for function and movement. Oscar grew up competing in sports, and in 2003, while he was recovering from a rugby injury, he started running and sprinting. Now luckily, a coach discovered him and encouraged him to continue sprinting, and in 2004, he competed in his first Paralympic Games. In 2004, he took a gold medal and set a Paralympic world record in the 200-meter event and took bronze in the 100-meter event. Since then, he's uh, had over 26 Paralympic world records broken in the 100, 200, and 400-meter sprints. Now, the controversy surrounding Oscar, Oscar Pistorius started in 2007. In 2007, he was competing in the South African Championships and he posted a very competitive time in the 400-meter sprint, 46.56 seconds. Now, this is very near the A qualifying time for the Olympics. So the IAAF, International Association of Athletics Federations, sort of raised their eyebrows a bit. And subsequent to this event, they passed a rule, and it stated that an uh, athlete could not use technical aids. And those technical e aids included springs. Well, Oscar essentially uses springs as prostheses. So it was unclear if he could continue competing or not. But he did. He competed in the Golden Gala event in 2007, and he took second, and this was in Rome. And again, a very competitive time of 46.9 seconds. Subsequent to this race, the IAAF hired a team of scientists from Germany to conduct a series of studies on Oscar to try to understand what role his running specific prostheses played in sprinting. From that study, the German team concluded that Oscar had an unfair advantage due to his running specific prostheses, that he exerted less energy than an able-bodied athlete of the same caliber. So subsequently, the IAAF banned Oscar from competing. When I got this news, I thought, how can a man with no legs have an unfair advantage compared to an able-bodied athlete? <laughs> It seems straightforward, but apparently it isn't. <laughs> in any case, Oscar filed an appeal with a court of arbitration in sport. A legal team in New York took up Oscar's case pro bono, and they put together their own scientific research team, which included me, and about six other scientists from around the United States. Together, we had over 100 years of experience in biomechanics and physiology research. Now, biomechanics is the study of how we move, and physiology is the study of how we function. So we felt well equipped to handle this case. We were headed um, by a guy named Hugh Herr. And now Hugh is also a very interesting person. He also happens to be a bilateral amputee. He also was accused of having an unfair advantage in the sport of rock climbing. Go figure. So at the age of 17, he was known as one of the best U.S. climbers. And he was involved in a climbing accident with a, a friend of his. They were out climbing Mount Washington in New Hampshire. And they were out for three nights uh, in a terrible storm. And after they were rescued, he sustained terrible frostbite and had to have both legs amputated below the knee. After he recovered, something sparked inside of him, and he became hell-bent to design better prostheses. This included prostheses for climbing, so that he could go climb the same routes he did prior to his amputation. So he'd make the prostheses maybe just a little longer with a little narrower hold for a specific climb. Today, he's a professor at MIT. And at the time that we were looking into Oscar, he was my uh, mentor at MIT. I was a postdoc there. So when we wanted to look at Oscar, we had a specific agenda. 
we wanted to look at a few different things. One obvious thing was metabolic cost, because that's what the German team looked at. We also wanted to look at his rate of fatigue compared to non-amputees. And, and thirdly, we wanted to look at his biomechanics. Now, before I get into metabolic cost, one thing that I noticed with the German study is that they measured Oscar's metabolic cost during a 400-meter sprint. In a 400-meter sprint, the energy that an athlete uses is comprised of aerobic energy and anaerobic energy. And each of those things comprises about 50% of the cost. So bear with me for a second. To measure aerobic en energy, it's simple. We have a gold standard. We have someone run on a treadmill or on a track, and we measure their oxygen consumption for at least five minutes at submaximal speeds, and then we can assess their energy consumption. Anaerobic energy can't be measured accurately. Now remember, the German team measured Oscar in a 400-meter sprint that's less than a minute and it's definitely not a submaximal speed. So their measurements were fundamentally flawed. So we had Oscar come into the lab, run on a treadmill and run outside, and we measured his rates of oxygen consumption, submaximal and maximal, and we found that his rates were absolutely equivalent to able-bodied athletes. So he has no metabolic advantage, even though the press took that German team study and publicized it to everyone. To measure rate of fatigue, we had Oscar do all-out effort trials. What that means is if I took you and I put you on a treadmill and I made you, made you run at top speed, you could only sustain that speed for maybe three seconds. And if I asked you to run just a little bit slower but still give me that all-out effort, you might be able to sustain that speed for like eight seconds. So we can characterize the rate of fatigue by an all-out effort, and that's shown on this graph. So relative velocity here is a fraction of top speed, where 1 is your top speed, and 0.8 is 80% of your top speed. So what you can see is, as you run at slower speeds, the, the run duration gets much longer. What you can also see is, the line that characterizes non-amputees falls right underneath Oscar's values. So Oscar's rate of fatigue is essentially equal to those of non-amputees. The third thing that we wanted to look at was his biomechanics. Now, the ability to generate force on the ground determines top speed. That's what we think is the primary determinant. So if you can exert more force on the ground, you can go much faster. So we had Oscar run on a very sophisticated treadmill. And this treadmill measures your forces that you exert on the ground, and it goes up to 30 miles an hour. So this video shows Oscar... That was quick, huh? <laughs> that's Oscar at his top speed. For those in science, that's 10.8 meters per second, or just shy of 25 miles an hour. What you didn't see was the net behind the treadmill, just in case one of those prostheses <laughs> came off. In any case, what we found is that Oscar exerts about 20% less force on the ground compared to non-amputees. So this suggests that he's at a disadvantage. But it's uncertain why. So to compensate for that force, it seems that Oscar swings his legs a lot faster, has a higher turnover. But again, this is an N of one. We've just got one Oscar. So how can we look further? Well, we had a group of, of unilateral Paralympic amputees come into the lab. So unilateral, below the knee. And these athletes are ideal because they have one unaffected leg and they have one affected leg. So we can look at the same athlete and measure forces in both legs and try to see if we see the same thing. So we did that. And what we found, if you look at this graph, is that the unaffected leg exerts about 15% more force than the affected leg at top speed. Now, these athletes weren't able to get as fast as Oscar, but they still were able to give us enough information to see that the running-specific prosthesis actually limits force, which we think limits top speed. So another way that we can look at these athletes is to measure how they move. So we put these little reflective dots on them. But in any case, all of this data 
tells us the same thing, that if anything, Oscar has an unfair disadvantage compared to able-bodied athletes. All of our data was presented to the Court of Arbitration in Sport. They made a positive ruling for Oscar, and he successfully appealed his case and won the right to compete in the Olympic Games if he could. Now, this was in 2008, and he narrowly missed the qualifying times for the Beijing Olympics probably because he was in the courtroom more than he was on the track. But in any case, as many of you probably witnessed, he did compete in the 2012 Olympics in the 400-meter individual event. He set a personal be best time in the qualifying round and advanced to the semifinals where he was beat out. He also competed in South for South Africa's 4x400-meter team, made the finals, but they didn't medal. About three weeks later, he was at the Paralympic Games, also taking home some medals. In the 200-meter event, he took a silver in the 104th place, and of course in the 400, he got a gold medal. What was interesting about this race, if you caught it, and I'll show it to you, is check out the very and end of this go. race. And it's a, a great start for Arne Ferri. Arno Ferri in the lead at the moment as well, but Oscar Pistorius has already gone past Blake Leeper. It's the two South Africans in the lead, and here goes Pistorius. Look at him go. Oscar Pistorius absolutely Watch storming the guy in the green. away. Oscar Pistorius, is he going to get, is he going to, he's been caught, is he? Oscar Pistorius just tying up. Oh, my goodness, he's been caught by oh. Oliveira of Brazil. And there's a little carnage. I didn't warn you about that. But in any case, a very surprise ending for Oscar. He was beat by another bilateral amputee, meaning both legs were amputated. And what was actually interesting was after the race, unfortunately, Oscar said, ah, that guy has an unfair advantage. <laughs> <laughs> his PR guy must have just been ripping his hair out at this point. But he accused him of of an unfair advantage because he accused him of height boosting. So the Paralympic Committee recently put forth a rule that allows a little bit longer prosthesis to be uh, competing in these events. And the guy that beat Oscar had just lengthened his prostheses before this race. In any case, for me it's exciting because I get to do more research. But one thing that Oscar has taught us is that the meaning of a person with a disability or the meaning of the word disabled needs to be rewritten. We need to use technology and encourage people to keep moving and keep doing what they want to do. And maybe instead of a person with a disability, we think of a person with an exceptional ability, no matter what that is. So as you walk home tonight, walk out to your cars, to the bus or to the bike, I really want you to encourage I want to encourage yourself to think outside the box and put yourself in someone else's legs. Thank you. <laughs>